tutorial on this. Adding a floating floor to the barn pop stand die. This is my project for the May 2015 Designer Challenge, which has a theme of barns, 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 and I decided to use every single item in the new farm collection. So what is a floating floor? Some people call them a stage, and basically if it's up underneath your pop-up, then you can animate things using the floor instead of always relying on the center fold. So basically anywhere that you cut a slot and put a little L support in, you can pop things up all along that floor. For an A2 card, you start with an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, choose something thick. Step one, cut it right up the middle at four and a quarter inches. Now you've got two strips. Take one of them, cut it in half at five and a half inches. And on the other one, take one inch off of the end. Since I cut an inch off the end, that long strip is now 10 inches long. My first score is gonna be right up the middle at five inches. So just get that strip onto a scoring board, score it right up the middle at five inches. Now I'm going to put it back in the scoring board again and I'm going to make a series of scores and they're always a half an inch in width. I'm going two in either direction off of that center fold. So now I've got four half inch panels all around the center of the card. And then before I'm done, I need to put this back in the scoring board again because I need two half inch panels out on either end. So I go out to the end, come back in a half an inch, come back in a half an inch again, same thing on the other end. So now each end of the cardstock strip has got two half inch panels. There should be nine score lines in the piece when you're done. So you've got those clumps of score lines in the middle and you wanna choose the outermost fold on either side to line up the pop stand die that comes with the barn set. And then just make the regular sandwich for whatever cutting machine that you're using. I'm using a Big Shot. And then when that comes out, it will have cut the pop stand right around that outermost fold. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the outermost fold in the other direction. So I'll tape that in place, roll it through the machine. When it comes out, it's cut the pop stand into the piece. If you want to animate something inside the barn, then you'll use the pop stand that comes with the hay there set. And those that gets lined up on the exact same two folds. And once again, you just run it through the die cutting machine to cut the little tiny pop stand in the center of those same two folds. So I'm going to do a little work with those small pop stands. What I want to do is I want a little mountain fold there on that one where the tabs are. That will help me locate which tab is on the outer side of the card. So I want the tab that's kind of pointing out towards the end of the card and I want to fold that up so it's out of the way. Now the other two tabs, the one on the inside of the card, I don't need them at all. So I can just take my little detail scissors and just go in there and trim those out. The only reason I'm trimming them out is they cross the fold so they can kind of get in the way. Whereas the two tabs you're seeing me cover up with tape right now, those don't cross any folds, so I can just leave them alone. What I'm doing now is I'm adding some Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive in the second panel. So I'm staying between the two fold lines. Doesn't matter that I'm covering up tabs. I don't need those particular tabs. I can just peel up the liner on that tape. The card folds right in the middle. And what happens is that panel comes across, sticks to the same panel on the other side. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. I see that my tape has gotten into my little hole there. I really don't want exposed adhesive in a pop-up card that's not your friend. So I'll just take my little detail scissors in there and just trim out that little bit of tape that crossed that hole. Now by bringing those two panels together from the top of the card, it looks very similar to what it would look like if you just did a regular pop stand card. You'd cut those pop stands in, you'd have the tabs on both sides of the fold. But then because we built that little structure underneath it, if I go in with my trimmer and just trim the fold, so all I wanna do is just make that fold not a fold anymore so that it's cut, then I can fold one section one way, one section the other way, and I've made a little support structure in the middle of my card for the floating floor. Out on the ends, I've got the little support structure in place. I just need to take the two folds and fold them both to the underneath side, and then you'll see the floating floor will sit in the middle on that little I-beam, and then out on the ends on those little fold under tabs. Pop stand cards are meant to open all the way flat to 180 degrees, so you don't really want to line up this floating floor into the fold of a card, because it'll be very difficult for you to open that card up fully flat. Rather, what you're gonna do is add two halves of a card. So what I've done is I've added some of the Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive to the bottom of my center support. I'm just gonna peel up one at first, and I'm gonna take one of those two panels that I cut in that very first step, just making sure that it's lined up and straight, 
I'll press that in. So there's one half of my base card. Then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to peel up the liner on the tape and remove it. I'm going to take my other piece and because I want this to look nice when it's folded closed, I want to make sure everything lines up in the closed position, I will actually attach that other half in the closed position. Just line it up, press it on. I've got the fold in place from the little I-beam in the middle, so I don't really need a fold in a fold. I can do it just like this. Now look how nicely it'll fold all the way open flat. You've got no tension in that fold. But those outer panels are going to fold under and support the floor on the outside. So I'll need some Elizabeth Craft Designs tape in that outermost panel on both sides. Although you may think that you could just kind of eye it and put it into place when the card is up and open, it really is much better to do it this way, which is to make sure that it's going to fold flat by folding it flat. And notice that I'm folding on the gold cardstock line, okay? So not next to the tape, but the next panel up. And so that gold cardstock panel is visible as I peel up the tape and press that side down. And I'll do that again on the other side. So I'm not folding on the outer panel, I'm folding the next panel in. Lay that flat, peel up the liner of the tape. I notice my tape has kind of overshot the edges a little, so I'll just pull that back in. And then holding everything flat, just close the card and give it a good press. And now that card stays nice and flat in the closed position, but when you open it, the floating floor pops up. I'm stamping some grass just kind of randomly with some butterscotch ink around the floor of the card. I will tell you that that stamp's probably 20 years old, so just use something similar. And then once I've got that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that one inch piece that was left over from my first cuts and cut it with the Outdoor Edges grass die. I'm going to switch to the little bit thinner tape, the six millimeter tape, and then I'm going to put that across the bottom of that grass, and then where I'm going to attach it is actually to the front of the little floating floor. So that will make it just like a little bit of grass is growing there. That'll be fantastic for my scene. With pop stand cards, you always cut two of the items. So I've already cut my solid barn. You can see it laying on the table. And now I'm working on the barn that's going to be on the front. And I want it to have a little hole behind the doors. So I'm nesting in the little X door die. And that will cut me a little rectangle into the front of the barn that I'll be able to see through when I open the doors. Now I'm going to assemble the barn. I'm putting the roof on first. I do love using my little fine glue for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the sliding door. So I put the little pie section of the door over the first section, under the second section, over the third section. And then all I have to do is add a little bit of fine glue. I'm using my fine line 20 gauge bottle with my Lineco pH neutral glue. And I'm just going to go right across the top crossbar. And then there is some little cut tick marks that allow it to easily fold over the top of that runner strip and back onto itself. So that door is attaching to itself and then that will make it slide on the little runner strip. Then what's going to disguise the little connection point where the door hits the door is by putting the little X overlay piece on top. So I'll use my glue again, press that into place, repeat with my other one. Since I am using liquid glue and it tends to squish, I do always like to just work my doors after I've got them on there just to make sure that I didn't accidentally squish some glue out where I didn't want it and make my doors not slide anymore. When you attach the runner strip to the barn, you can use adhesive all the way around the perimeter. You just need to keep the glue out of the actual slider areas, the runner strips themselves, so that the doors can still slide after that strip is attached to the front of the barn. And you see here how it works, so the little doors will slide. You'll be able to see through that opening into whatever is animated inside the barn. The little hay stack that comes with the hay there pop stand set is of course sized to fit perfectly inside that barn. So that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to place that face down in front of one of those small little pop stand tabs, add some glue behind the pop stand tab, and then just hold the hay stack in place while I fold over that tab and right onto the back of the little hay stack. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to add some glue to my little tab. Then I place my item face down in front of it. Or I guess since this is the back one, it wouldn't matter. I could go face up. I don't think you'll see much of it either way, but it doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to do it. And then just press that tab to the haystack until it sets up. Now the last thing to make the pop stand work is to just add a little glue at the very top of the haystacks. One nice thing about pop stand cards is you can back fold them if you need to. So you can back fold that makes it easier to get those two items to come together at the top, give them a good press, then let go, and you'll see what you've made, a kind of little tent thing 
it will pop down, it will pop up when the card is opened and closed. Now, I don't do any decorating on my back barn, I just leave it plain, but I did glue two barns back to back since that's pattern paper and it only had the red wood grain on one side. So then what I do is I just add some glue to my tabs, I'm going to fold them up and over and onto the barn and just hold them until it sets up. Now this is going to be a great time for me to add my little weather vane, so I'm going to add a little glue to the inside there and then just press that weather vane into the glue. Then for my other barn, which is the decorated one, I've added that little hay blob in the upper window. This one I didn't bother about making sure there was red on the inside because you're never going to see it. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing. Glue on the tabs, fold them over, press them until they set. Now I've got both barns attached to their respective tabs. I just need to attach them to each other. A little glue at the top. The easiest way to get them to come together is to back fold the card. That way it kind of becomes a little bit of a flat card so I can kind of line up the roof lines when I've got them nicely matched up, give it a good press, let go. Now you'll see what happens. You can open the little barn doors. I've added a little haystack and a little pitchfork over there to the right hand side, just glued to the barn. And I changed my mind on my weather vane color, so I'm going to go ahead and add a silver one over the top of the brown one. If you put Elizabeth Craft Design's double sided adhesive on the back of your cardstock colors before you cut all the little pieces of the characters, assembly is a breeze. Watch this. items anywhere along that floor to have them pop up but when the card is closed they're going to be face down in the card and they're going to move towards the end of the card a half an inch because that's how tall the floor is see when I push that floor down notice it moves everything towards the end of the card about a half an inch so just make sure on your taller items that you're coming into the card enough that they won't stick out when the card is closed that will not be an issue for cheapers the chicken he's well within the card but for brownie the cow behind the barn now, items behind the barn are going to lay down on their back when the card is closed. So for him, I may want to just check here if I kind of push that floor down, he's going to move up a half an inch, and I just want to make sure he's still within the card. So that's the closed position. I'm going to give a little pencil mark where I'd like Brownie to be animated. I put in the L support for Brownie, and I've got him animated there in the back of the card. And now I'm going to show you the process as I do Cheapers the Chicken. I'm taking a thin piece of cardstock. It's probably only about a quarter of an inch thick. And I'm going to add a little foot at the bottom. I fold it under a foot, and then I'm going to add some adhesive and another strip of cardstock on the rest of the strip. So I want that to be nice and strong, but I didn't want to have to fold through two layers. So I folded the foot first. So the foot is just one layer, and then everything else is two. Now, it would have been great to have figured out these locations before I put my card together, so don't poke your finger. But I do need to get in with a craft knife just to get a little hole started. And then I can go in with the detail scissors and hollow that out and make it can even be a pretty ugly slot because it just needs to be big enough for your little L support. So what's the L support? You're going to push that down through the slot and there's adhesive underneath that foot and that foot's going to stick to the floor. Okay, and you want that to be straight up when the card is open. So you're just going to do that by eye and you can see that L support is in there now and Cheapers is going to glue right to the front of that support. So I'll just add my glue right up the front of the support and press Cheapers to it. I die cut a country fence from the Susan Tierney Coburn Countryscapes line and I've glued that to the front of the floating floor and then I'm going to add Virgil the pig. Now Virgil's not very tall, there is enough distance for him there between that fence and the end of the card so he will not stick out of the card when the card is closed so I can just add some glue to the fence and stick Virgil to it. And then I cut another fence and glued it to the back floating floor. So again, just adhesive at the bottom where it touches that little support and glue that in place. Cheapers the chicken comes with a little egg die and I thought that would look great inside the barn on that hay. So once again, I'm gonna back fold the card because that's gonna give me the ability to get down in there somewhat flat and press that egg down in there against the haystack. And now you can see when the barn doors are open, you can see that little egg in there on the haystack. You can slide the doors closed and then you won't see anything at all. 
I've cut and assembled another Brownie the Cow for the front of the card, and I had the idea that I'd like to have him kind of perched behind, maybe holding the little greeting that I did with the Farm Greetings clear stamps. So I'm just going to glue him in place there. I've decided I don't want his tail on that side. I'll move that tail and put it somewhere else. And from the half of his body that I didn't need, I'm going to go ahead and get in and get his two front legs. have a character just kind of holding the greeting on the front. Speaking of the greeting, I used some selective inking and then I used part of the cow chalkboard greeting and part of the chicken chalkboard greeting to make my own little phrase. So here's the card all finished up. It is an A2 size. When you open it up, you can see the whole scene. The only thing I added inside was the just saying hey greeting that was stamped and then cut out using the little stitched label that comes with the hey there set. If you are watching this video anywhere other than the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog post, I highly encourage you to follow the direct link that's in the About section and head on over there so that you can see this card. I've got a diagram of the folds that you need for the floating floor. You can find all of the other barn cards made by the Designer Challenge team for this month's challenge. It's just a wealth of wonderful inspiration. Please like my page on Facebook, Karen Berniston Designer. I post daily inspiration. You can find out where to buy the farm collection at ecraftdesigns.com, and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.